Oh no, not a good place for a speed run, guys. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? So today I got the Vorza S, the HPI Vorza S back out and I've made a few changes since the last bash. In the last bash, the front out drive actually came in loose. I put some new Loctite nut on it, should be fine now. I've also put some 80,000 weight oil in the rear differential, uh, sorry, the front differential. I put 50,000 in the rear differential. I put 80 weight oil in the rear shocks. But I really wanted to put the stock wheels back on to test them again. Someone did mention I probably should give them another go. And yeah, I just glued them back together and they seem to be fine. It is a bit strange not having a bead on the actual rim though. Let's just see how long they actually last. So as you can see, it is completely stock standard still other than my carbon fiber braces. I did notice there's a fair bit of flex in the shock towers, the actual chassis, and they do claim it's 7075. So we're just gonna have to see how long it lasts, I guess, if starts getting big gouges and stuff then I don't think it's actually 7075 I have put a polycarbonate skid plate on the bottom of it because yeah I don't really want this sort of stuff happening all the time just a little bit of protection now I did not change the front uh, oil but I did just screw the preload down all the way and I did mention in the second bash I was actually running the Dementor springs they have helped a lot they're a lot stiffer than the stock springs. I may have to change up to like 50 or 60 weight in the front. The rear oil was the main one I had to change. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. I am running my Ovonic 4,500 milliamp, a 50C, I think, a six cell batteries. And I almost forgot to mention guys, I did actually shim the front and rear differential, the external of the differential. There was already three on the crown gear side of the diff, and I put an extra one on both front and rear. And I also put the upgraded uh, shims on the internal gears on the front differential because it did seem quite loose. I did put 80,000 weight in there, but I did want it to tighten it up a little bit more. So those really thick, I think they're 0.5 millimeter shims inside the differential have definitely helped to tighten it up quite a lot. Guys, this servo for 10 kilograms is amazing. It's done a really, really good job. The whole car is basically, you know, it, it's set up well. They just missed a few crucial parts, one being the center brace, in my opinion, because if you buy this to, to actually bash it, it's not quite to the standard as some of the modern bashes, but you do a few little mods to it, like I've done the, the carbon fiber braces and the polycarbonate skid plate on the bottom. If you get an aluminum skid plate or something, like a basher bar, this thing should last a long time. I did also put a bunch of tape, a really thick uh, filament tape, just to prevent any bending, any cracking, because they are quite weak shells. I think every company should start making their shells a little bit thicker. Some people do pay a lot of their money. When I buy one of these, I'm paying literally one whole fortnight of pay. So yeah, I don't really want the body and stuff cracking straight away. It will be nice for it to last a couple of bashes, you know. And just quickly, one other thing, guys, I have got the 7075 parts that were missing off the car out of the box. So if you did get one of these cars and you did not receive the 7075 parts, contact your local HPI suppliers and they should be able to help you out. They, they should be able to send you out a little bag like this with all the parts that you need. So. Now, I very much doubt this is gonna get the 64 mile an hour that they claim on the box with the stock gearing and everything. But um, yeah, we'll see how we go with the stock gearing and six cell battery. Alrighty, we've got signal. We got a little bit of battery. So I'll change this over to peak kilometers. That is recording on zero, so we'll see what we can do. All right, here we go, no people. Oh no, not a good place for a speed run, guys. <laughs> that was almost full throttle, not quite. Well, that's, that's really decent. 81 kilometers an hour. I will change that to miles an hour somewhere up on the screen now, guys. But 81 kilometers an hour, not quite full throttle. I think this might actually do around about 100 kilometers an hour at full throttle, if I have a decent road. <laughs> All right, guys. All righty, see how we go.
Yeah, the shock oil is much better, guys. Probably should have changed the uh, center diff oil. Seems a bit, uh, bit loose. Oh no, oh, there we go. A really smooth car guys uh, you know the, just the suspension and everything once it's set up right it's good yeah actually feels really nice oh no Oh, nice, double. Oh, that was my mistake. Something feels a bit odd. I'm always very amazed when a stick or a rock or something gets into somewhere that it kind of looks like it's impossible to get into. It's just, it's just strange. Uh, that fan's not working either. There we go. Yeah, pretty powerful these days. <laughs> oh, that was that was a bad one. There you go, broke something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it might have just stripped a screw. Yeah, you can see Jesus, the mark. it came out. That's yeah. terrible. Actually ripped the um, the nylon lock nut from the outside on the on the backside. Oh, well, there we go. The drive shaft is perfectly straight. I buy them and do the reviews and see what breaks and see what doesn't. And yeah, so other people don't have to. <laughs> yeah. It does look like bluey, doesn't it? Yeah, it does Yeah. Sorry, it's broken. Can't chase it. <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> All right, guys. So that drive shaft is completely straight by the looks of it. 
Both front drive shafts look fine as well. I can definitely say this car is an absolute beast. I did go quite hard today, and obviously I'm driving on the bark piles, but that's the whole reason I started this place, because I'm not sure what these cars can take. Once I've bashed here a couple of times, then I know I'm gonna be able to launch this car and not do too much damage. Obviously my center brace, the carbon brace, has strengthened it a lot. But guys, I have actually designed a proper center brace for this car, around 16 millimeter carbon fiber and a couple of module sort of things mounted for, uh, to the front and the back. So I wanna get that made and maybe sell them. None of the Vorses have a center brace and it does make a, a massive difference with strength and longevity. I'm keen as to get it back out. I'll get everything fixed up. Obviously it's just a lock nut and screw pretty much, but I'll go over the whole car, check it. It might not be quite as bashable as some of the other cars out there, but it's definitely a good car guys. A little bit overpriced, but I think it's still worth it. And guys, we can't forget 81 kilometers an hour at almost full throttle. So I will get it out very soon and do a full throttle run. Hopefully we get close to 100 kilometers an hour. All right guys, cheers. Catch you in the next video and as always, stay safe.